Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you in the next video about land graph introduction. So today we are going to look at map reducing concept and the way how you can utilize it with the land graph. Okay, in general map reducing concept is something really outside of land graph itself. It's a more global concept where you can parallelize execution of repetitive tasks and process it faster. And today we will try to apply this technique to land graph. And, uh, well, we'll be working on an example, and the idea would be, well, we are, we are building, again, the financial advisor kind of thing. And uh, here's the idea, right? We would have several steps, and uh, first we have an input from user where we are defining something like the area, the financial area we would like to get advice from, and uh, how many stock options should be there. And then based on the number of stock options, we are going to parallelize the execution to several nodes dynamically and fetch the information about specific stocks. And then the reduce step would be then when we grab all this information from all these nodes with a known number at the moment. And then we would ask uh, the advisor to create an advice for us. Uh, which stocks are good for investing and with some reasoning why it's good, uh, some prioritization maybe. And yeah, this is the result of this graph. So let's get started. Okay, this is the plan. I just told about that. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, let me define some basics first, like uh, the LLM we are going to use. We do have the graph overall state, investment advisor state, and here we have the financial area. For example, uh, at least we are going to use something like small AI companies in this case, like how many companies we are interested in, like stock number. Uh, this comes from user input, these two values. And then we do have some uh, technical fields, like we have list of stock tickers, uh, the companies we, we get from the first step, and we are going to research this information further. And this goes to stock details. And uh, since uh, this is part of our mapping step, then we are using annotated and uh, reducer because we are going to merge the results together in a single list that we need this. And the final recommendation is a string that we get back and can show to the user. So this is pretty standard, pretty basic thing here. And now let's define nodes. And uh, first one is generate list of stocks. So what do we have here? We are grabbing, uh, we are taking the overall graph state, which is investor advisor step, and here we are just saying that, okay, you are a financial analyst, this is the prompt, and uh, just uh, based on the current market, uh, suggest the top uh, in specific area, this one, and suggest the top uh, stocks available in this uh, area. And then we ask you to okay, return us the list of only stock symbols, nothing else, and uh, that's not enough because here we are also using new method in this course, uh, it's called this structured output and then we are providing that the structure should follow the stock tickers and this is just a stock tickers list of strings and we are defining this in our uh, node kind of model then we are working it and then we are returning back stock tickers and this part of our uh, model, the overall model already, this one, right? So this is the first node and uh, let me define it and we can give it a try, just run it in separation. So I'm defining financial areas, I was saying this already, small AI companies and I'm interested in top five kind of companies. And so we have the expected output, right? It's uh, five tickers of companies, I have no idea what those are, but anyway, uh, the LLM is clever enough to, to provide us this information. And uh, next note we should work on is this fetch stock details. And interesting thing here, uh, this is part already of our mapping uh, technique. And this is a standard note which we'll be using in our graph, but take a look at that. It does not take the overall state, it takes something specific like stock uh, state, which is a ticker. So this is really interesting, right? Because we are providing to note not the overall state, but the very specific state. And uh, there is a reason for that. You will see it later in this uh, video. And the implementation is pretty straightforward. I think I took it from lesson three or something where we were playing with uh, Yahoo Finance. And we're just grabbing the information from Yahoo and combining this in uh, overall stock information and providing back stock details. 
And this is just a, uh, well, I said it's dictionary, but that's wrong, it's a string. Let me it. And just to refresh your memory, uh, if I make a call to this uh, function or not, there's a ticker AI, I would grab, I would get back pretty much of different information, right? That's like, even I'm not going to read it through, but this is a lot of financial information we get from uh, Yahoo Finance. So next thing, uh, we need to reduce in step. So what so far we have the initial step which gets us a list of tickers. We created a node of functions so far which provides financial information based on specific ticker and this is part of mapping in the future it will be part of this. And now we have the reducing step and this one takes all the previously gathered financial details and uh, tries to produce the financial advice based on that. So what do we have here? We have the stock details and this is a list of, uh, of this uh, hairy thing, right? And then we are asking, okay, you're a professional advisor and here's the list of companies with their financial data and uh, we are going to insert all these uh, items of this one to the list. And then we are asking to analyze this information and provide us a short brief summary and some recommendations about good investment. And we are also talking about ranking and we are saying that, okay, it should be sorted list based on priority. And uh, yeah, that's it. We are just sending a human message with this prompt and we get back some recommendation which we are saving in the overall graph state. And I'm not going to test it right now because, well, just imagine I have to provide this thing as a parameter. Everyone will be lost here, but believe me, it's working. We will see it later uh, in, in the whole graph. And uh, well, now all the pieces are ready and uh, we can now compile a graph itself, right? And this is pretty interesting because this is where this map reducing techniques comes into the play. Uh, so what's happening here, uh, pretty straightforward. We have the overall state and we are creating our graph or builder so far. We are adding all the three nodes and this is again the generate list of stocks which gives you a list of tickers. Then we have this mapping step which takes this single ticket and provides you financial data on that. And uh, we have this generate stock recommendations. This is the last one, which uh, provides, which analyzes the you know, financial data and provides you back a recommendation. And so we are starting our graph. We go from start to generate a list of stocks. That's clear. And this is the magic which happens with map reducing. I will show it to you. So let's start from the end. We are adding uh, not age itself, but we're adding conditional age. And here we are saying that. Well, uh, from generate list of stocks, we should go to fetch stock details, but through specific function continue to details. And this continue to details, uh, it's really interesting because it takes the overall state, but what happens then, we are using the send method from land graph, and we are going to send, uh, so what's happening, we have a list of stock, sticker, uh, stock tickers here, and for each ticket, ticker, Ticker, sorry, it's ticker, not ticket. For each ticker in the list, we are going to send it uh, separately to fetch stock details node. And here we are providing our own uh, state for this node. And that's, uh, remember I was I was talking about that. This is why we, we are allowed to have the, our own uh, state for this specific node. Let me remove this one. So it's this one, right? It's not overall, it's just symbol ticket as a string. Again, so we are, uh, this is the core of this uh, video probably. So we are sending uh, to a specific node, a specific uh, state with a single ticket, and we are doing this for all the elements from the list. So it doesn't matter how many of them we have. And this is kind of a condition for our conditional age. We are saying here, and that's it, right? And the rest is pretty standard here. So we, from fetch stock details, which is multiple at the moment, we know this. We are going back to generate stock recommendation and this one already gets the list of details. And from this one we go to the end. And if I compile it, we will say it's uh, kind of straightforward, but now we know that this fetch, uh, it's conditional age, we can see it here, right? And this fetch stock details, it's shown here as a single node, but in general it's map reducing here already in place and uh, multiple instances of this node will be created based on the runtime, so it's not hard coded. And yeah, practically that's it. Again, this is the thing you have to memorize from this lesson. 
uh, this is the send from LandGraph, send a command. And let's give it a try, right? So I'm defining financial areas, small a companies, as I mentioned already. And we are looking at five top five stocks in this area, right? So I'm running it. And here we are. Let's take the output. So we have five stock tickers here. One, two, three, four, five. And then for every ticker, we do have stock details. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And based on this information, a recommendation was generated and it's here, right? And if it's not visible, I can show it in more details. And take a look at that. It provides you the ticker, it provides you the company name, some description and the investment outlook. And well, it's even a it's kind of, I think it's, it's a table, right? If I try to open it here, it was a table generated with some short description at the end. So you can have a quick overlook of that. So this is how it works and maybe one thing I wanted to show you in more details. Let's run the same graph in, in the studio. So it's here, it's the same graph and I already put a interruption before the fetch stock details and well, let's give it a try with the same data, right? So I'm defining financial area as uh, small AI companies and I'm interested in five stocks at most. So submitted it and take a look at that. Uh, we stopped at fetch stock uh, details because I put interruption before here. And what do we have from the generate list of stocks? We have a list of five different stocks elements. And here uh, for continuing, the next node would be, and we have five different nodes with the same name. So fetch stock details, fetch stock details, and five times, right? And it stays here as well. So if I continue from here, uh, five nodes will be created on the fly and each one will be processing the ticker in parallel. So if I do this one, and then see, we even can see that uh, one was finished, the other was still working and so forth. And finally we get this uh, recommendation, which is a pretty cool thing. All right, this was it for this video. I hope you find it useful and you found something new in the land graph area for you and well so far we know a lot of different smaller pieces how to construct your graph how to work with memory how to do map reducing how to do the user uh, in the loop thing so i think next time it will be a proper time to start building something real based on all these smaller concepts so don't miss it stay tuned and i will see you next time in the next video Thank you. Bye-bye.